Welcome to Red Compass After Hours, where the best and brightest of the financial services industry let their hair down, unbutton their collars, and share their passion for payments. I'm Mike Truter, Director of Digital Ecosystems and Innovation at Red Compass, and in each episode, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Julie Getter. Let's kick things off. Today, we're overjoyed to welcome our guest for today's episode, co-founder and CEO of Volante, Vijay Adi Raju. Since co-founding Volante Technologies in 2001, Vijay has grown the organization globally, and today they provide mission-critical payment and financial messaging automation solutions for customers globally. In 1995, Vijay also founded standards-based middleware solution provider Gluebeans, following a very successful career with Oracle. As this is an after-hours chat, I hope everyone has brought along a drink. I have a gin and tonic to keep my vocal cords lubricated. Julie, what's your tipple? Unfortunately, Boeing tea today. Oh, that's 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 okay. VJ, are you are you going to to go more exciting? What's wetting your whistle this evening? Uh, I'm having chai latte. Chai latte is very good. And maybe. Um, <laughs> Maybe I could ask you, Vijay, to share a little bit about uh, what led you to having such a strong focus on financial messaging. Sure. As you mentioned, um, we, uh, coming from Oracle databases, middleware were our, was our core competency, um, and Bluebeans was, uh, we were um, looking at uh, uh, yeah, Java beans in those days. Uh, I took that EJB, uh, which was uh, very uh, at the infancy stage, and took it to the next level, saying, we'll create uh, application integration through Java Beans. In those days, there was no asynchronous EJBs uh, mm -hmm. or message, I mean. So we created uh, a concept called asynchronous EJBs and uh, started creating them. And finally, uh, that company merged with another one. And then uh, after we saw the term there, we, we just came out and then we were looking at in the same space saying, what are the issues uh, that financial industry is facing, uh, implementing uh, either BizTalk or IBM uh, WebSphere or Tipco Rendezvous or any one of those middlewares, what are, where are they spending time and what are the uh, challenges? And is there a room for us to create another middleware actually? That was the whole idea. Then we found out that there is no room for another middleware, definitely not. But there is a room for us to make these middlewares more efficient. So we became a middleman for the middleware, actually. So uh, by creating this product, which is uh, essentially uh, making all this middleware uh, be more efficient uh, and uh, all the financial institutions to uh, bring application integration uh, to a next level, basically, where they were spending uh, assuming that uh, if, uh, if a project takes 100 days, uh, most of the 100 days is spent on labor intensive activities where people have to code. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, fortunately for the vendors, I guess, unfortunately for the financial institutions, there was more than one middleware in each department. One has BizTalk, the other one is side by somebody else is working on uh, um, WebSphere. And the work which they do on this, uh, 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 Microsoft products will not be used on IBM. So there's no, there's zero portability across them. So, and huge amounts of armies of people were working on making things uh, happen and time to market any new product was like taking forever. Uh, so what we felt is uh, we, then we started analyzing what the problem was and then it, it came down to labor intensive activities. So we, we said, okay, we need to do a lot more automation to be brought into this. And we brought that automation into this and portability across all the, so because it's, it's a uh, business uh, logic which create out of which the code is generated, we can create business logic once and can run on any other platform. Doesn't really matter. So uh, it's scalability also brought into picture on across all the platforms. Um, so pretty much brought the open systems concept to the middleware layer. Uh, and that's how we uh, reduce the time to market, portability reduced, uh, uh, especially, uh, yeah, and then the revenue started increasing for the customers. Um, and it, it, yeah, automation is the genesis. And today, if you look at uh, lots of people are, or lots of companies are getting funded with huge valuations on no code, low code, and all those things that we have done 19, 20 years back. So that wow. is, um, and why did we choose financial industry? We felt 
if we can prove it in financial industry, we can go somewhere else as well with the credibility which we build. But we are so busy here, we don't have time to go. <laughs> If you've got the secret formula, everyone wants to use you, right? That's a, that's a good problem to have. Right. Okay, Let, let's get down to business then. Um, just to remind everyone, the format for, for today is really simple. To add a bit of spice and spontaneity, Julie and I don't yet know the topic that BJ is going to choose. So we're going to ask him to look at a big list. And then without any script or preparation, we see where the conversation takes us. For the conversation, there's only one rule, like the Scottish knife, the ski and do. We need to keep things short, sharp, and to the point. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, uh, BJ's choice of topic. Let me throw that up on a screen for you. There we go. Okay, so VJ, which topic, which topic are you going to choose tonight? I guess move to cloud. Move to cloud. Yep. Okay, move to cloud, move to cloud. Where should we begin? Julie, where, where, where do you think... Um, do you think cloud has uh, a role to play in financial services in the future? I'm smiling because of course it has, right? For me, <laughs> the cloud is a foundation for like the, the financial services of the future. And, and, you know, like, I think it was very interesting to hear like Satya Nadella at the Singapore FinTech Festival, uh, mentioning that compute is everywhere and is the base for everything. Because I, 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 I do believe this is the case. Yeah. DJ, from your perspective, um, you know, from, from what, what you're doing, how do, how do you see the, the, the kind of route to cloud happening for, especially the kind of the big banks, right? I, I guess they're, they're leading the way, yeah. um, sh showing the others how, how, you know, what's the word, walking through the snow, you know, um, making, making the path clear for others. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, it's very uh, interesting that uh, a few years back, uh, um, uh, when talked about cloud, uh, a lot of banks were a little hesitant uh, because the risks uh, involved and all that. But uh, in the last two, two and a half years, we have seen a huge shift, especially from the tier one banks. And some of our customers are, I would say, all of our tier one banks are on the cloud on our payments product now. Um, and uh, now the smaller and medium-sized banks are also trying to follow the same thing. Um, and uh, my prediction is after from now, I, I'm not going to be precise, I guess, but uh, five years from now, I don't see data centers for the banks existing. Yeah. Uh, they'll all be on the cloud, uh, whether it's private or public, or it doesn't really matter, but they'll all the technologies, all the technologies will be moving or all the business applications will be moved to the cloud. And um, uh, yeah, payments definitely is uh, on the top of the list. So one of the interesting points there, I mean, you, you say five years, five years just has a special meaning for us because we speak so much about ISO 20022 that just happens to be five years time. So you've got this massive shift in, in messaging and, and middleware changes and, and, and a move and a move to cloud. Do you think, do you think the two are kind of, becoming linked? Do you think they'll happen at the same time? Or is it going to be one and then the other to, to mitigate risk? I, I think they're all in parallel. Uh, the thing is, uh, 15 or, sorry, 20 or 20, I'm an old timer, I guess. I'm saying 15 or 22. But 20 or 22 has to happen uh, irrespective of whatever happens, whether it's, uh, it doesn't really matter which deployment architecture you use. Uh, cloud is just deployment architecture. Uh, but uh, say 20 or 22 is, uh, has to happen. And I think uh, with SWIFT's deadlines and all that, um, all the bigger banks have already started work and we have a lot of uh, work going on. I think probably you might have seen some press releases with our clients. So uh, that's independent of what's happening. So it, it, cloud is going in parallel with those things. So it's not like one or the other or one after the other. It's, it's all going in parallel. Uh, and uh, banks are taking advantage of uh, the time they have uh, in their hands now. And the cloud, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I know you want sharp and uh, quick answers, but cloud is beautiful, I feel like, in the sense, uh, uh, especially with the COVID uh, situations uh, where uh, you don't have to go to the data centers and access to those. And you, wherever you are, you can access the cloud. Lots of admin work can be done. Monitoring can be done. Everything can be done. 
uh, from where, whichever corner of the world you are. Um, and then, uh, yeah, depending on your questions, I can expand that so much. And I, I feel like if you don't do the cloud, basically, I don't want to be arrogant, but evolve or die. <laughs> Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's that's how uh, passionate I am about cloud migration. In the sense, everybody will be evolving towards their cloud. Uh, if you don't make those changes fast enough, or if you don't, a whole digital transformation has a different meaning when you're going through the cloud and uh, the yeah. service to the customers, adding value to their and customers. Banks would achieve a whole lot, and adding new products it becomes a lot more simpler. Uh, because evergreen software, they don't have to wait for huge planning cycle for nine months upgrades and things like that. You know, it all instantaneously can be done. So you think of it, you think it, and you can do it, right? So you don't have to wait for anything. That's that makes a lot of sense. Julie, I, I, I wondered. I mean, one one of the things Julie and I talk about a lot um, is the kind of twenty four by seven operating cycle that that's going to come, especially when we look at you know. I mean, our, our concern is normally core banking and how does core banking cope with that? You know, the fact that there's no downtime RTGS platforms that are already kind of moving to 24 by seven operation. If we look at India, you know, that, that's, that's going to be everywhere soon. And it, it's, it's difficult to imagine a world where, you know, I, I think again, in five years time, the question is, you know, going to be how do you operate without being 24 by seven? It's, it's going to be a strange concept, right? Right, absolutely right. And uh... To, um, yeah, the it, it, thing is, um, I, I'm surprised it, it is not already actually. You know, <laughs> why? Why is it not there? Uh, when the technology is already there to support all that, I just the mindset just changing and saying, okay, I need this for my customers. You know, I think banks have to really evolve to that stage, saying, I need to provide 24 by 7. Uh, yes, there are lots of other issues. Uh, core banking systems have to be graduated to that level. Uh, uh, and uh, payment systems have to be uh, up and running 24 by 7. Lots of resiliency has to be brought in. Mm -hmm. uh, so even on the cloud, uh, you have to have act to act to act to systems uh, where uh, they, they can be geographically redistributed uh, so that they, the risk goes down for the banks and they're up and running all the time. Uh, so uh, how this architectures are built, uh, so a huge opportunity for the technologies to improve uh, they, again, our we our product is already ready uh, for resiliency and the act to act to supports which we do. Uh, but it's it's it, a whole lot of things will be changing from uh, where we were to where we are going to be in the next few years on the cloud. I think for me, like COVID has played like has accelerated the move effectively, because first of all, like you know all of a sudden, people were not in the premise of the bank. So why would you have your data at, 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 at the bank when your people are not in the bank, right? So I think like, you know, the discussion around cloud uh, have, have definitely accelerated with COVID. And I think for me, like, um, I do agree with you when you say people who don't migrate to the cloud are going to die. I, 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 I agree, like, strongly. And one reason for that is, like, if you think of like, you know, the expectation from the customer, all in all, right? And the service that they can get now through fintech, through big tech as well, um, it's not the same like, you know, level of personalization that were expected in the past. It's not also like the same pace of innovation demanded by the customer. And I don't think that you can actually meet the customer demand in terms again of like, personalization using the data or like innovative services without migrating to the cloud. It's just too costly only you know, or not safe enough. Right. Absolutely in agreement, so. So um, Vijay, I, I'm guessing you, 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 you're really being that glue that sticks everything together, right? So you, you're the bit that enables pieces of a bank to move into the cloud environment while others remain inside their data centers, right? How, how, how difficult is that journey for banks to, to kind of pick up a piece and move it into, into the, the, the cloud? And, and you know, how do you make it easy for them to do that, to, to take out the risk? Right. So um, seeing the uh, in the tier one banks, what they are doing is 
um, they are uh, migrating most of the applications uh, to the cloud. Um, and uh, some of them are doing uh, um, vanilla applications, only payments just on the cloud. Uh, but the smaller players are smaller banks and medium sized banks are um, looking at others who can provide this as a service, basically. And we are, uh, for example, uh, payments as a services we have an offering. Uh, and we are we are providing that, and where we uh, partner with other uh, application providers, uh, including AML checks and uh, accounts and all that. So we have partner ecosystem which we have created, with with, with whom we can work with. Uh, but at the same time, we can also work with whatever the bank prefers to have. But uh, payments as a service, uh, meaning uh, through the cloud, uh, so that they don't have to have their, their data centers and. They don't have to have people to manage that, and they have access to this 24 by 7, uh, high resiliency and high performance, high throughputs, and all that. So, um, the uh, for the medium and small size companies, what you're asking is not a major issue because they're going to the service provider like us, like a payments as a service provider, and then the major uh, banks, uh, all the tier one banks. Um, are slowly migrating a lot of applications on, onto the cloud. So once they are on the cloud, integration is a lot more easier uh, because they're on the same. Um, otherwise, we, again, as you know, we are known for our data integration capabilities or application integration capabilities. We, we do go through uh, different locations and all that, but that will add a little more complexity uh, to the latencies and things like that. So. As long as you're okay with those latency issues, then there's no problem. But if you say, if you say I don't want any latency, then hey, please bring that application closer to where we are hosting or where you're hosting the other ones. So, so that proximity will become more important. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just thinking about that, that latency point and, and we know, you know faster payment schemes have relatively tight SLAs and uh, in fact, yeah. one of the topics that, that uh, again, we, we discuss a lot is the real-time sanction screening, you know, because fitting that inside of, you know, a, 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 an end-to-end -end process that's measured in seconds um, right. is, is really challenging as well. You know, uh, maybe a, a thing that we're speaking about is not, not the domestic fast payments, but, but what we're seeing with things like P27, cross-border faster payments, um, or, or between Thailand and Singapore is another example, but, um, you know, I, how do you solve those latency problems? And, and I, I'm, I'm assuming the cloud is part of that, that mixture for the solution because you have the compute capacity, right? Right. Well, again, uh, if you look at uh, all the vendors out there on the cloud providers, they're making lots of uh, advanced uh, uh, architectures from their infrastructure side, um, which is uh, helping us out to mitigate that risk of uh, latency and all that meaning low latency and all that. So um, uh, that the latency issues can be addressed at a lower level uh, as well uh, from the you know, cloud infrastructure. And uh, because of the cloud providers have data centers almost in every country, uh, it becomes a lot more easier to pick and choose where you want to start the transaction. Again, if you look at all these things are combined, I don't want to throw buzzwords here, but uh, because I, I, I don't like using all the latest terminology into this uh, anytime. I don't want to do that, but uh, a lot of, uh, like where do you pick the transaction? Uh, which node you want to send it to? All that is artificial intelligence will be able to address it. Uh, so you, you will pick the least, uh, uh, so in the operations research, I guess, basically, uh, what is the least amount of time I need to spend on a wire? And that's all it is. And then go to that point and do it. So I think as we are evolving, I think lots of things will happen where the latency should not be a concern uh, as we move forward. Uh, but and again, all these guys, uh, right from um, Azure to AWS to Oracle's and Google's, they're doing a fabulous job about uh, enhancing their capabilities in the cloud and the architectures and how dynamically they are changing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing, actually. So, uh, and they're making it easy. Every day you can see, every weekend you can see how much of uh, progression they are making to make it easy for vendors like us and even banks, 
how they want to deploy things. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I'm an eternal optimist and uh, <laughs> that's it. I'm an entrepreneur. And uh, um, But things are looking very promising and exciting, actually. I think one thing like it's interesting is like I heard IBM, IBM sorry, recently talking about um, the cloud and the open source like concepts that they are uh, putting together around the cloud. And I think one thing that was said by IBM, which was like, for me, very interesting, was the fact that today we are only like at stage one of the cloud effectively. And that, you know, it's basically a lot of bank migrating their complexity to um, the cloud, but not necessarily full, like, uh, you know, thinking fully from uh, end-to-end workflow, like being cloud native really cloud native. And so for IBM, like they were like, yeah, it's, it's only stage one. Then when you see already, you know, like all the possibility from stage one, I think it's very promising for stage two and stage three, right? About type of service, the type of personalization, again, like you can give to the customer and the cost, the reduction of cost as well, right? So th- therefore like, you know, the kind of what you can price and the margin you can recognize as a bank because the cost is, is, is lower. I'm going to throw a kind of different perspective because I, I agree cost is important and, and you can deliver for far less, but you, you typically need scale then to make it work, right? So is there not a chance that you know, it'll become too easy and flood the market with too much choice? Then not, not everyone can survive when you can't charge and you can't get scale, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, that's a good problem to have, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just, just I'll answer that also, but uh, going to Julie's uh, observation on the IBM side, I think that cloud native is a very important point which you brought up. Um, because uh, when we are talking to lots of banks, they say their vendors are coming saying, okay, we are also cloud enabled. There's a difference between cloud enabled and cloud native. Okay. Cloud enabled is you take the same monolithic application which you have and just put it on the cloud. You're not taking advantage of the cloud architectures. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, but if you build cloud native architecture, you can take advantage of all the cloud uh, features. And uh, as we were talking about the active, active, the resilience, and all that we had talked about earlier, uh, failovers, and all that, it becomes a lot more easier if you build a uh, cloud native architecture, containerization, and all the, it becomes a lot more easy. And then what we have done is, we have built ground up using microservices architecture, uh, which uh, runs on the cloud, um, uh, and it, it, it's built for cloud native. Basically, we look at all the uh, elements of the cloud, and they say, okay, let's build this product for the cloud. So if we um, so the different difference again. I don't want to do too much, too much of marketing our product here, but basically what I'm saying is banks have to be very cognizant about this fact: cloud enablement versus cloud native, and pick the vendors who are cloud native rather than just enablement. And uh, it, it's it, they are not going to get any benefit of the cloud. I, I think I, I think I agree with you. And like for me, when you're not, when you are like short of cloud enable, it's a bit to say. I have different electricity provider. I'm changing from one to one because of like, you know, either cost or security and so on. But then I'm not really getting all the benefits. Like, you know, if I really can think of like, how like, you know, this new electricity provider fully work. Um, And I think for me, like um, one point that that, that you mentioned as well around like, uh, um, short of being like cloud native and cloud enabled. At the end, it's not a technology issue anymore. You know, you mentioned earlier, like culture and mindset being quite key. I think, you know, this is, for me, this is the next hurdle that we kind of need to go over uh, because the technology is here, the, the right mindset to use the technology is here, but not necessarily within all the organization effectively. Right. One thing I want to uh, come back to you, Mike, about uh, the cost uh, and the scalability issues. But uh, one additional point I want to make here is it's uh, business opportunities for the banks, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
uh, new business opportunities. Uh, today, in the absence of cloud, if you say there is no cloud, then how do you start a new service or a new uh, product in a different country, uh, which you may have best presence in, but still how easy it will be for you? Versus if you have cloud, how easily can you take the new product okay, uh, to the market? So uh, that whole product productization and globalization of those products becomes a lot more simpler with cloud deployments. Um, and you don't have to have a data center in a country, okay, unless you know, regulators want that data to be there in their country, you don't need to. And even if you have it as a as the cloud providers will provide that, it becomes a lot more easier because sitting in the remote part of another uh, country somewhere uh, on the opposite side of the globe, you can still do all those things. Uh, very quickly, you can ro roll out products. And the beauty of that is, uh, and I'm very passionate about this, is there are um, 300 million adults who don't have banking accounts in the world. Okay. And majority of them come from countries like China, India, uh, and India, I think 170 million or so. Okay. If we can get all those unbanked individuals, mm. banking domain, okay, um, they will have a different world altogether. We are talking about cashless societies. And when uh, even in the bigger countries, developed countries also, um, and developing countries and underdeveloped countries, uh, if, the, if there are any entitlements and if there are any things which government wants to do, if for every dollar the government wants to spend for the needy, um, a small percentage of that uh, uh, goes to the beneficiary. Uh, there's so much of preparation everywhere. And by having these banks, uh, or if you can get all these unbanked adults to bank easily, uh, immediately what happens is you that inclusiveness will come mm. and they get the benefits right from the government to the beneficiary without any preferage. Uh, and it goes to the person who the government wants it to go to without any problem. And once you have that facility uh, and all the transactions going through the bank accounts uh, and that money flow, uh, not having to deal with the cash, carrying cash and all that is gone, no checks, nothing, it's just all electronic. And you, you uh, again, uh, countries like India, you have seen, uh, uh, Paytm and others, um, everybody has a mobile payment device now or uh, in their mobile phones. I feel like I'm like not up to speed on them, you know. Do I want to down download that or not is the question for me always. But Google Pays and Paytms and lots of other vendors are there. They're making it so easy for people to do banking. Yeah. And the reason why I'm giving you a big story about all this is cloud enables banks to create new products uh, which they have not even envisioned before to remotest parts of the world and make lots of money. Yeah. So and, that, and, that, and, and, yeah. And, and bringing the unbanked into, into productive uh, society also means GDP grows for those countries and, and it brings prosperity and, and pulls people out of poverty, which is huge. Absolutely, right. absolutely, absolutely. That inclusiveness is so important because I think uh, even in, in developed countries, if you look at San Francisco or what uh, 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 Salesforce, CEO Mark Benioff is doing for the uh, um, uh, people on the road or streets, you know, uh, and uh, especially with COVID, New York and Boston, I see like, so much of poverty out there, you know. Uh, it's, it's so sad, actually. And I feel like, what are we doing? You know, are, are we humans or we are uh, not? You know, we just get into that, saying, okay, what can we do? And I think ultimately, technology for the benefit of the society is, if you look at it, I think cloud will be a game changer. Absolutely, I think I think that's such a great point to to end on as well. We we have this. Um, uh, saying, you know, as, as part of our, our red flag accelerator and, and human trafficking um, work, you know, that data saves lives. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should update that to, to include cloud saves lives as well, right? And, uh, and 
it, it's an important message for us to, to kind of bear in mind um, that cloud is enabling the unbanked to be banked and uh, making all of the world society productive members of, uh, of, of our global economy. Absolutely. Vijay, thank you so much for taking the time to join us for this after hours chat. Your depth and breadth of experience in improving payment messaging and people's lives as well for years and years has made this a fascinating discussion for us both. The opportunity to chat with people knowledgeable and passionate about payments is what motivates Julie and I to get out of bed each morning. And uh, for our audience, did you find this uh, discussion motivating as well? If you enjoyed the discussion, then please do show your support by giving us a thumbs up, hitting subscribe, and clicking on the bell to get notified when future new content arrives. And don't be shy about giving us feedback either. We really appreciate your comments and suggestions for new topics and guests. But that's all for this week. Catch you on the flip side. That's who I am, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got primaries. I have put the heart and soul into this and then I just talk about it from my my emotions, you know, saying, okay, this is it is, you know. So sorry. We about want that. your passion. We want your Absolutely. passion. You were passionate, so no no need to apologize.